Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Welcome to round five of the Three Musketeers tournament. This one is going to be taking place on the craziness of Sentina 3. Now, this map is a little bit different than some of the others that we've seen because it is an absolute and total choke point map. And it has probably the most ludicrous single quantity of reclaim of any of the maps in the generally accepted pool. There is a metric butt ton, I think is the scientific term, of mass in the center. 1100 on the two T3 wrecks, a thousand scattered through a bunch of T3s, and then even some more Mantis and other things mixed in there. There's enough to feed an entire army in the middle of this map, and you got to get all your commanders up there in order to capture it. As far as the team goes on the north side, we've got Blast Chilled, that is Achieved Jaguar, and Massive going Seraphim, Seraphim, Seraphim all the way across the board. On the south end of things, we've got Triple Seraphim as well. This is going to be a very alien matchup. That's uh, gonna be Mephi, Bully Dozer, and Zock. Looks like all three ACUs are moving northward from the south team. Jaguar might be in for a bit of a painful experience, at least in the early portion of this game, if his teammates do not get up to the front and assist him. So what are we looking at factory-wise? Blast chill, first land, second air, third and fourth land. We've got first land and second air for massive, no future plans, and loads and loads of power for Achieve Jaguar, who's going to be trying to burn through as much of the mass as he possibly can. Of course, already sending some towards his teammates. Got a single land factory for each of the south side players, and we do have some spam going down for Zok. Of course, since this is a Seraphim matchup, there's going to be loads of hover artillery. Those land factories can be put to use, whether that is building engineers to make naval units or other interesting things, but you can always just spam the arty and get the job done that way. Jaguar chowing down on this T3 wreck right here. You can see the uh, mass value dropping a fair bit as he sucks away. He's already within reach of all three ACUs, so he needs to get to the water El Pronto. Otherwise, he is going to get knocked out of the game. As soon as all of the shots start connecting with him, you can see he leaves, routes a course, or plots a course, I suppose I should say, for the outside edge. Mephi trying to build wall sections to trip up the pathfinding, but is not going to be successful due to the reclaim that is in the way and Jaguar is going to make it to the water. So he got a fair bit of early reclaim, but that's going to end up putting a damper on the North team's plans because they will not have access to this resource. Jaguar coming up out of the water just a little bit to try to suck down some more as he's able, but he needs to be careful with the HP on his ACU, especially considering that there's now a couple of artillery moving up as well. These three ACUs have taken barely any damage at all. Massive and Blast Shield now moving towards the front. Blast Shield actually going for the gun upgrade ASAP. But since there's already a damage head start, there's less total HP in the north side pool on those ACUs. So I don't know that the north side is going to be able to retake the center in the earliest portion of the game. We got a Zooey moving around the left. Blast Shield trying to get into the rear of that base and wreak some havoc. No air units as of yet. For the south side, so there's already a T1 bomber down from Creature that is going to be working on the build power and PGENs, I am sure, dropping away on those engineers. T1 mobile anti-air already out of the factory, so those are going to get knocked down pretty easily. Another T1 bomber coming in, and the artillery moving around the back end. Probably going to go after the hydro power plant on the south side. Looks like we've got plenty of land factories in place for Blast Shield going for that spam option, moving some tanks towards the center. If he can get some some units around that commander with the gun upgrade, it might turn out okay for them. Mephi also starting the gun upgrade. Looks like there's going to be some really aggressive posturing from the ACUs in the center. Maybe we'll get to see them going after one of the bases. But on a map like this, where you're within easy reach of any of the three enemy players, you don't want to get your ACU too overextended, because you could find yourself sniped to death. The Northside team has claimed the right expansion. Four mass extractors over on the left as of yet unclaimed. Uh, not a whole lot of reclaim out on these islands. I'm not actually seeing any, but there are large boulders scattered through the trees back here that you do need to pay attention to when you are trying to get your early game head start. 
even if you don't get any mass from the center, if you decide to leave your ACU in the back, then you can take advantage of those rocks to do yourself some good. Chi Jaguar assisting Massive's upgrade, probably another gun. Yes, it is. Mephi, not Mephi, Blast Shield has just finished his upgrade. He will be moving towards the front line. Bully Dozer trying to get some reclaim, taking a little bit of artillery fire. Mephi not looking too terribly healthy, but he has started the gun upgrade as well. These guys are going to be a little hard pressed to hold the line. Achieve Jaguar reclaiming that T1 factory so he can get rid of the build power on the front line. As far as the total unit count goes, I think the combat advantage goes to the north side because even though the unit counts do look roughly the same, there's a lot of anti-air in the mix for the south, which is going to reduce the combat effectiveness. Mephi did finish the upgrade, but he's below 2,000 health thanks to all of that artillery that was coming in. And there goes the commander. He got the upgrade, but was too slow. Bully Dozer taking hits from the other gun commander. Blast Shield bearing down on that comm. And Bully Dozer is probably going to go up in flames as well. There he goes, not able to take the hits from those gun comms. Zock is getting an upgrade on the side, but he is going to be in a huge amount of trouble now since his teammates have disintegrated. Zock feels bad, man. I'm sorry. He is going to stay in the fight, though. He's got plenty of factories online pushing as many units as possible, and he will, I am sure, start getting even more online as he moves his engineers in to claim these other bases. Right now, the focus is on getting enough units online to not let the center fall. And I find it very odd that none of these guys have gone for Navy because that seems to be the meta in most of the games that I have played on this map. But I guess if you put enough weight down on the center, then you can make do with the sheer force of your T1 units and prevent your opponents from venturing into the water. Zok finishing off his upgrade will be done in just a tick. Does not have the notify mod enabled. That is the gun upgrade. So we do know what he's got after now. He's getting T1 anti-air up. Got his radar in the center so he can see where the units are placed. And he's building more land factories in the middle. How is the economy doing? 25 mass per tick, stalling pretty hard, but he will have access to reclaim as the game moves on. Zok waiting into the fight with his gun comm, trying to push enough T1 units up to the front to distract those other ACUs. Blast Chill taking a substantial amount of hits from those artillery. Zok may have enough units to make a dent, but he is going to exhaust the main grouping of his force and not going to come out ahead. Oh man, that was not what you want to have happening. He does have a consistent flow of units from the rear, so I think he'll be able to hold back the tanks. The Blast Shield is just going to be able to wade right in with that gun comp and do an irreparable amount of damage. Zok can still potentially hold this position, but it is getting more and more difficult as things shape up well for the north side. Got T2 engineers out of that air factory, so T2 air to contend with. Bombers, gunships, any number of potential messes to get yourself into. Zok once again bringing his units towards the front. There are so many tanks being produced from those rear factories. It's kind of astounding the amount of production that he has brought to bear on the front problem. Blast Shield having to back up at sub 2500k health. Did he disconnect? Does he kill you with explosion? Uh, that's interesting. I wonder if Blast Chill had something else come up where he had to bail. Might have just been a straight disconnect. There was no desync, so something happened there, whether it was a rage quit or what, I do not know. But now there's a team player missing for the Norse. Zox's chances just got a whole lot better. Zok moving to the rear with his damaged ACU, gonna hide in the water and rely on his units to hold the front now. I'm gonna have to get a statement from somebody about what exactly happened there. I will put some subtext on the screen, which you're probably seeing right now already, that explains what went on. Over on the left side, Zok is going to be claiming these mass extractors once again, reclaiming all of the mass and getting even more land factories online through the center. He's already started his upgrades to T2 mass extractors, typical Zok. 
he is putting off upgrading any of his mechs until the mid portion of the game, choosing instead to sink all of his economy into more and more units to ram up the front side of anybody who dares to stand in front of his base. But Chief Jaguar got a fairly substantial amount of land factories online, is going for the mass extractors on Blast Chill's side. Looks like Massive is going to be kind of stuck for mass. He's going to get a little reclaim out of this, but Jaguar is going to take the bulk of the economy and then we'll see what he constructs. Jaguar has got the T2 upgrade. He's going to start putting in T2 point defenses. Of course, that is an excellent idea when you have a choke point as narrow as this. But then again, with everyone being Seraphim, artillery can still be a problem as it moves around to the rear. Looks like Jaguar is going to go for some naval forces finally. Frigates are your best friend when you're dealing with Zooey's. T2 gunship's going to clean up the mess for now and secure those waterways. Looks like Zok does have some air online, but he is not devoting much to production because, of course, I am sure he is having some power issues. Only 780 power income with all of these mass extractors. That definitely needs to be his highest priority is getting this other hydro online and then expanding his T1 P-Gen build. Looks like there's a push in the center. The point defense is going to put a stop to that, though. Massive is going to be able to retreat behind the wall of units coming down from these two players. T1 bombers harassing the Zooey's on the right, while interceptors are killing off the gunship that destroyed all of those artillery on the left. So many factories on this map, it's kind of incredible. You don't get to see production like this very often. We got a T2 engineer out of the factory, which I'm sure will move on with building TMD and T2 power generators. Ilshiva is now coming out of the factory. I would not be surprised in the slightest to see a mass move to T2 factories so that they can start pouring out those Ilshivas. Looks like we got five going for that upgrade in the center. Don't really need to give too much credit to the T2 point defense because Ilshivas will be able to stomp all over that. Overcharges from the two ACUs in the center will, of course, dampen the plans of any Ilshivas trying to get up into the bases. But should there be enough, those T2.5 units will be able to crush out any fire base in the center. Chief Jaguar trying to push up with T2 point defense, the creep getting him in range of some of the forward mass extractors. He'll just keep building closer and closer to the front, restricting Zox's play area until he can hopefully start eliminating some of the economy that's feeding this huge number of factories in the rear. Zock going for some frigates, a very slow build, but a build nonetheless. And it looks like Blast, not Blast Shield, Massive. I keep getting these guys confused. Massive is going to be producing frigates on the front line, the epitome of getting your factories close to the fight. There's enough units between a, chap, a Chief Jaguar and Massive to actually hold the front line without much of a problem. So I think we're going to see a little bit of a stalemate settling in here as these guys go for some upgrades and potentially some later game plans. T2 P-Gen going down. Looks like we've already got one TMD, so TML will not be quite the concern that it once was. And I saw a projectile that I thought might have been a TML, but I was mistaken. Looks like Yelshavas are now rolling out of the support factories on the south side. Will be nice to see those starting to eliminate the front lines on those T1 units. Ilshivas have such a great range advantage versus most of the T1 units that they go up against. You can pretty much kite anything to oblivion. Looks like the T2 point defense is now within range of the front line mexes. Let's take a look. Nope, just barely out of reach. Chief Jaguar going for the gun upgrade on top of his T2, power stalling quite hard in order to get to it. Jaguar rocking 78 mass per tick income, Zoc at 67. Jaguar, of course, showing his eco whore tendencies. Since he has nearly all of his mass extractors upgraded to T2, he has two bases, Zoc has three. But Zoc is behind on economy. He's just now unpaused his second mass extractor going for the T2 upgrade. He's only got one T2 max on the entire field. Attempted run by on the left. That's going to be denied by that clump of Ilshivas. Very timely production there. And T1 bombers coming overhead, going for probably the TMD. The bombs were planting on the shield generator, so I know not exactly what the target was. Might have been the T2 point events. But now there's more units coming up 
from the north. Looks like that's going to be the end of the point fetch creep there. Achieve Jaguar actually going for T2 artillery installations. I know that we have discussions back and forth quite often about the merits of a T2 artillery build, but in this particular case, when everything in the base is so concentrated, the T2 artillery will be able to earn its mass back in damage to the enemy team. Jaguar, let's go ahead and click on him, see what the range is. There you go. He'll be able to put in fire on these clumps of T1 units, potentially kill off some of the mass extractors and build power in the rear. Overall, just soften up that base quite a bit. Tactical missile launcher going down. Not going to be of a whole lot of use. Nope, sorry. Defense. That will be of use, considering the fact that there are some mobile missile launchers on this side. Is that really? Nope, that's a T2 point defense. I was going to say, are they really healing up that mobile missile launcher? That's an absurd amount of APM spent just to keep a mobile missile launcher alive. Chief Jaguar still continuing to scale up his naval production. I think Zok is going to have an issue keeping that at bay since he really doesn't have much production online. But he is moving engineers to the south, so that will help out a little bit, and maybe, just maybe, he'll be able to keep his grasp on the water. T1 bomber still coming through, able to take out a T1 mass extractor there, and the hydro along with a lot of T1 power. We're now in a power stall, as you can see by Zox shield going down, 868 being fed on a 100 to 300 power stall. Definitely correctable, Zok has turned off his T2 shield, and I'm sure he will be building more power, but it's not a terribly great situation. Zok should be putting his ACU out of the water right here in order to stem the tide of these artillery as they move forward. He's still got all three of his T2 mass extractors alive, but he will not for long as those artillery continue to bear down on his base. Got some T1 forces responding. Hopefully they will be enough to eliminate all of those and Ilshavas are having to stay up on the front line in order to deal with all of these Zooies that are threatening to move in on the left. Massive has got Nano and Gun. That is a dangerous combat commander. Ooh, that was a hard hit. Two mobile missile launchers went down to the artillery fire. And actually, no, they did not. The artillery is gone. So that may have been something else. I am not sure. Excellent base wipe by Zok. He's now going to be able to protect everything on his front line. Got T2 transports coming in to pick up units, but that transport is now going to get harassed by a grouping of interceptors. Might be able to take the son of a gun down, but no, they are going to get left behind by the transport. Quicker turn speed and quicker acceleration on the transport than on the interceptors, if I do remember correctly. But the flight speed is exactly the same. So once the interceptors catch the transport, they will be able to kill it. The question is, though, whether or not you're going to get a good enough turn in where you'll come out exactly behind the transport and be in range. Brigands have now wiped out Zox's only naval factory, so he is locked from the water, harassing the air factories on the south side edge. That's going to reduce all of Zox's air production. He's got one T2 factory. He actually lost his other over here, the other T1. And now we've got a loss of the HQ. No! Noth is coming in to snipe that critical building. They've also killed the power off here. Zok is using the, using the um, little trick that you can to build on the wreckage of the T2 power generator and then reclaim the wreckage in order to get back both mass and power. He's now launched attack missiles. T1 bombers coming in on a ship G to wipe out all of those mobile missile launchers. The launchers have headed towards the ACU, which is going to move. No kill there, and Zot calls out the GG and gives up the game. That was a very good fight. Most people would not try to stay in the game in a one versus three situation, but Zok very nearly did it. The only thing that crippled him was the fact that he did not go for early game eco. His play for more units was very useful once the front started collapsing because he had such a huge number of tanks. But then once that initial threat had passed, the eco that the north side had done, achieved Jaguar having mostly T2 mexes before Blast Shield died, and then Massive having a tremendous backbone in his economy as well, it just overwhelmed Zok towards the end. 
There is an advantage to both styles of play, but in this particular one, Zox was not sufficient. Alrighty guys, that is gonna wrap up this game. Of course, I will be continuing at the tournament in the next video. Hope to see you over there. That is gonna wrap everything up for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like and share it with someone. If you wanna support the channel, catch the streams or join the Discord, check out the links in the description. Thank you all for being at least partially insane, and I will see you in the next one.